This is Twit. Um, <laughs> Leo, I, I I titled this next piece from our pained abbreviation department. <laughs> Because, boy, this one is a stretch. Yeah. You know, yeah, I know what they, you're going to talk about, too. Really wanted to call this shaken stir. Uh, so, <laughs> little shaken, Bond reference. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Shaken, S H A K E N. And, oh, this was, was a reach. Signature based handling. So, we got the S and the H of asserted. Now we have the A. Information. Okay, we're going to forget about the I. Using, forget about the U, tokens. Oh, boy. And we're going to get the K-E-N uh, to finish the shaken. So, ouch. And then, of course, and then stir, that, that comes from secure telephone identity revisited. So it's like, okay, you guys, mm. you know, the military, I think, has the best acronym people. <laughs> I don't know where, how no, that Congress happens. is pretty good, too. They come up uh, with some uh, wild acronyms. Yeah. Anyway. Always, they're mostly retronyms, you know. Yeah. Horrible as those abbreviations are, taken together, shaken and stir, do deliver a protocol for authenticating phone calls with the help of cryptographic certificates. The U.S. Federal Communications Commission has been pushing for shaken slash stirs adoption and has imposed an end of 2019 hard deadline for networks to implement the protocol. Um, I have a link to the FCC.gov's what they it, it slash call hyphen authentication. And I had to cut out some of the self-serving agit pie nonsense from it. But what I did say, what I did keep reads, it was titled combating spoofed robocalls with caller ID authentication. And notice it's spoofed robocalls, not robocalls. So uh, this reads chairman, FCC chairman, agit pie, quote, American consumers are sick and tired of unwanted robocalls. Amen. This consumer among them, he says of himself, caller ID authentication will be a significant step towards ending the scourge of spoofed robocalls. It's time for carriers to implement robust caller ID authentication, unquote. And then in the same announcement, how will caller ID authentication help consumers? Caller ID authentication is a new system aimed at combating illegal caller ID spoofing. Okay, I didn't know it was illegal, but apparently it is, but everyone does it. Such a system is critical to protecting Americans from scam spoofed robocalls and would erode the ability of callers to illegally spoof a caller ID, which scam artists use to trick Americans into answering their phones when they shouldn't. Oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to pick this apart. I'll keep reading. Additionally, consumers and law enforcement alike could more readily identify the source of illegal robocalls and reduce their impact. That's true. Industry stakeholders are working, and I didn't know this, and I'm glad for this, to implement caller ID authentication, which is sometimes, unfortunately, called shake and stir. Once implemented, it should greatly help the caller, the, I'm sorry, greatly, greatly help the accuracy of caller ID information and should provide consumers with helpful information for determining which calls are authenticated. Shake and stir is a framework of interconnected standards. Shake and stir are acronyms for signature-based handling of asserted information using tokens and the secure telephone identity revisited standards. This means, they write, that calls traveling through interconnected phone networks would have their caller ID signed as legitimate by originating carriers and validated by other carriers before reaching consumers. Okay, now, of course, this is what we've had for 
HTTP ever since uh, what was SSL? Uh, the Secure original sockets layer. What the 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 original Netscape browser? Oh, uh, most, like Nets, Nets, Netscape Nets four or something yeah. at least. So yes, we've had. I mean, this is all they're talking about is that the originator of a call sign the caller ID. Thank you. And that the signature be verified <laughs> by the recipient, by the, rec by the receiving network. Okay. Doesn't seem like rocket science. They're going to do it, which is good news. Um, in November of 2018, Chairman Pai, this is the, again, their announcement sent letters to voice providers asking those that apparently had not yet established concrete plans to protect their customers using the shaken stir standards to do so without delay. Do, do, do. In February 2019, Chairman Pai welcomed many carriers' commitment to meeting his timeline for implementation, called on others to catch up, and made clear that the FCC would consider regulatory intervention if necessary. So the news is... Last Wednesday, almost a week ago, AT&T and Comcast announced that they had successfully tested what they believe to be the first shaken stir authenticated call between two different telecom <laughs> networks. And, of course, the contents Phew. was, Watson, come here. <laughs> I need you. <laughs> so... Apparently, work on the shake and stir protocol has been underway for a while, and telecom operators have used it internally, but only for calls originated and terminated within their own networks. So they've, like, you know, been getting ready to reach out and touch someone, <laughs> and they finally I'm did. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> so once broadly adopted, incoming calls not signed, and that's, of course, I guess still a possibility, could simply be dropped as a subscriber option. And spoofed caller ID for signed calls would become impossible. Uh, so this will not by itself stop robocalling, but it will certainly chill the callers uh, who then significantly know that law enforcement, if they were to sign, if they were to use signed caller ID, they can't be spoofed anymore. So anyway, I just I want you know the, the robocalling is a problem. The spoofing of of caller ID is a problem because you can't block. You know, I think we've talked about this recently. In fact, you know, you can block a a, a call a robocall, but then it just comes back on a different number because right, they just right. make them up. Right. So there's no benefit at all to doing that. And so anyway, progress. Um, and then maybe, you know, at least, at least it'll give us initially some more control. Uh, and then we just need legislation if that ever happens. So we'll see.